Hey, everybody. Welcome to NAB Show Live. I am Dave Curley, and I am here with my buddy, Alex Lindsay. Hello, Alex. It's good to be here. It is good to be here. I'm enjoying this. This uh, We're, we're uh, kind of in the, the, the big buildup before the show actually officially launches, and I'm, yeah. I have not had a chance to uh, get out on the floor and see anything yet. That's why you're I'm, not supposed to. No, I know. I know. You're not they, supposed to. I, I know. I tried. I've, been, I've been doing it the whole time. The last yeah, two days, yeah, he I've been wandering around. He's I've been, been going out, taking things, taking things moving yes. things, move, turning other Hi, lights on. Hi, I'm Alex. On. Can yeah, I have one? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah exactly. That's, yeah. That's a, we actually have an intern that goes around and does that. Yeah, yeah. Pablo, he goes in and immediately starts uh, asking for free. He comes back with more stuff <laughs> than than any of us. I mean, it's you amazing. You have to know how to ask. No, I know. And he, he's also really good looking. Too. Oh, well, so, there you go. There you go. Yeah, and he's from Chile, so you know, it's this whole thing. Anyway, we are sitting here with actually uh, a company that I have uh, been working with uh, off and on with uh, Martin here from uh, vMix. And um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So for those of you who don't know, uh, vMix is, uh, is, is live switching software. Yeah, that's right. So we started out making uh, the software many years ago, mm -hmm. uh, fully functional live production software, and have gradually been adding hardware mm -hmm. turnkey systems for people who want those as well. So we sort of have two different customers, customers that like tinkering and mm -hmm. building their own um, systems, and then we have those that just want something that works that's ready well, to and, go. And that's where I came across vMix uh, a couple of years ago. Before and we're, I mean, if you've seen our booth back here, we're using a TriCaster. We've yeah. got, you know, hundred thousand dollars worth of broadcasting streaming equipment in there. Um, and I was looking to do some streaming at home, and you know, on no budget. And I was looking for some switching software, and I came across vMix. And one of the things I liked was that I was able to get started with uh, a trial and be functional and do all my testing and figure out what I wanted to do and then actually, you know, pay for the software and get into it and, and actually have some success with it. And thank y'all yeah, for, for doing that. That's, that's that that is great. You can you can start on the low end and build your own rig and, and and that's what's, I guess, one of the main advantages of, say, a, a switcher is that if you don't have the switcher there, you've got it in your studio and you just want to play around with some settings, say, play some videos and see how they might work in your live production, mm -hmm. you can just install it on your laptop and you mm -hmm. can even create presets and then load them on this when you're back at the studio. So um, it's, it's sort of what vMix came from was my own requirements where mm -hmm. I was doing a couple of shows many years ago and I just... Um, Back then, you didn't have a complete integrated solution, um, playback, cameras, and everything in a single piece of software, and I didn't have the budget. You know, right. I wanted to do something on the cheap, and my background is programming, so I thought, um, <laughs> give it a go. Very, very, very daunting task, particularly on PCs back then around 2005 oh, yeah. uh, was when I started um, working on it. So, um, yeah, it's really just built for what I want to do as quickly as possible. Yeah, I find that, that some of the most successful products out there, you've had tremendous success with the products that you guys at Pixel Core have mm -hmm. made because you've come up, you've, you have a need, yeah, I, and I you come up with something. The best products are when you're scratching your own itch. Yeah. You know, you know, you know yeah. like you have, you have, there's something that you're trying to figure out how to get done in it because you're the best customer, you know, well, you, you are a good customer typically, you know, it, yeah. rather than trying to, I think a lot of people try to develop something for an idea. Like people will be interested in this, but they're not trying to solve a real problem, yeah. you know, and, and I think that definitely makes a difference. Now, your um, your software now handles 4K 4K inputs. Yeah, so 4K we announced last year at, at NAB mm -hmm. um, 2014. Um, and so we're still there, 4K ready is what we're saying now, because we're still waiting for other camera manufacturers sure. and um, everybody else to start using 4K more often and right. when and they're ready. So is that mostly an import an input? Issue, yeah, so you can, well, yeah, bringing the cameras in in 4K is, is still a bit of a challenge. Yep. These days, you, you, at the moment, I think the best way to do it is via HDMI. Right, right. Um, because you still have to use multi cable SDI yeah. um, for. And when you say H, okay, so, so HDMI is just the single cable, so you're yeah. looking for an HD, you either take what you already have, convert it to HDMI, or cameras yeah. that are doing 4K that can output HDMI. Mm -hmm. out. Well, yeah, so, yeah, or can output. 
Quad SDI, I think, right. is, the, is the, the current standard. I'm right. hoping, you know, by next year's NAB, there'll be a single cable solution that's standardized that every camera manufacturer has. That's just has. crazy talk. And then vMix will be right there ready to have them all plugged in and do 4K. And I guess the other um, aspect as well is waiting for people's internet connections to catch up oh, so gosh, that yes. there is a, a large audience out there that's ready to receive 4K. I think it's right. slowly happening. You know, Netflix has trialed mm -hmm. 4K with mm -hmm. some of their shows. Right. As that becomes more and more popular, Popular, people are like, hey, I want to stream in 4K, and VMix will be right there. And, that, and that average it. speed is, is starting to catch up. And, yeah. and, and, and I think it, it also depends on whether it's H.264 or HEVC. You know, like yeah. those are those are things that are are. Um, if 65 gets ratified. Yeah. Then. Yeah. I mean, you know that. And, and uh, the uh, now, are you your system is also encoding? Yeah. So so it's really an all-in-one box. So you're going to take you're going to get the video signals in. You've got playback. You've got all those bits and pieces, and it's going to actually stream. You're just going to point it at Ustream yeah. or YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Your provider is, right? And then record as well, right? Yeah, so simultaneously recording, um, streaming. You can also send it out via SDI if you mm -hmm. have a supported hardware or use one of our systems. And you can also send it to a separate display, up to two separate displays. Mm -hmm. So you could have your multi-view, you could have a preview on that display, and then your control. Um, on the middle display, so yeah, I guess five or six different simultaneous output are, options. Are we able to do multiple recordings? So, like, say, ISO recordings from each channel? Yeah, so that's and then in a, there. A clean version and then a program? Yeah, version? so the, the way we have it is we have what we call multi quarter, which is our version of ISO recorder. Okay. So, that gives you your raw cameras right. if you want to do your own um, post production editing. Sure. And then you have the master mix that you can record to a number of different formats. Um, so yeah, you can have all of that going as well. And we also have, as new in, in, in NAB 2015, we're announcing the new vMix Replay, mm -hmm. which is for sports productions, able to record four cameras simultaneously mm -hmm. and then do slow motion playback, switching camera angles. Good. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different output options going on there. And, um, and we just keep expanding based on customer feedback. I guess that's the main thing that really drives me is, is hearing customers come to our booth with very interesting and mm. unique problems. And, and that's the challenge that I really I thrive on is seeing, well, can we do that? How do we do that? And that was part of the challenge with 4K. You know, 4K just started last year, really, I guess. Right. 2014, they thought it was a year as 4K at NAB. And it just before that, I was thinking, can we do 4K on a PC? Is it possible? And fortunately, it was. Hardware was up to it. Mm -hmm. and, and already assuming that 1080i, 1080p. Yeah. Um, 1080p 60? Yeah, 1080p 60. Yep. Um, and can you mix SDI. and match those inputs? Yeah, so that's a unique advantage of, I guess, vMix over some of the other switches out there. You have to make sure they're all locked to a particular format. Right. Um, but yeah, mix and match 1080p, 1080i, 720, SD, just you know whatever you've got, which is great for people in the budget. They have a couple of SD cameras. Maybe they've um, only be able to afford one HD camera, sure. and they want to mm -hmm. use them all. Perhaps that's, that was my setup. I had a little Vixia, the 1080i Vixia, yeah. um, as like the primary camera. But then I've got this Canon GL2 that I've had for mm -hmm. 10, 12 years. It's still a solid. Yeah, you know, performer. So I wanted to get that in the mix, and that's what I liked was being able to do that. And you can also mix in your VTR channels, your DDR channels. You can you can do yeah. multiple formats as well: MJPEG, MOVs, AVIs. You know, what other wh whatever you want to play through as well. Yeah, and so with vMix, you're not limited to DDR channels. Right. Every source is treated like a camera or a DDR or a graphic. Including, am I right, um, you can actually, you've got an engine for doing a screen grab? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, so built-in capture there, so if you have a, a Apple or Windows laptop, right. bring that in over Wi-Fi or over the network. Right, good. Um, are, you, are you able to receive uh, RTMP streams or HL, HLS streams? Like, so, so for instance, like a Teradek or, or something like that? Being able yeah, to so what we work with the Teradek Cube mm -hmm. um, yep. with its RTSP support. RTSP. So we built that support primarily for the Cube um, a few years ago now. So mm -hmm. that's a great way to bring wireless cameras in in full HD. Right. Um, and then you also have the... And those could theoretically be remote cameras as well. So if you had like, yeah. for instance, a remote, like a Bond or, or something like that, you could theoretically be bringing it in from Yeah, so we support else. access to the Teradex Sputnik as well. Right. So that's where you send the Bond signal to and then you bring output. that into the production mm -hmm. that way, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you could, be, you could have remote, for the, those listening, you mm -hmm. could have, you know, Four remote people out around in the city, and they could have they could be actually sending 
those signals back. You know, over they could either have an internet connection or they could be using a bond where they had just cell cell towers and all that stuff could be coming in and being cut. Right. Yeah. Right. Without yeah. a lot of extra hardware, that's just all being seen by the computer. And usually those are kind of virtual, you know. Yeah, layers. just like inputs, just like um, cameras and everything else, and so you can mix and match them, you can create what we call multi-view effects, so you mm -hmm. can have side by side, so you have the presenter and out there in the field, quad and, views. And are those, are those uh, are you able to transform in 3D for those? Yeah, yeah, so you can have them in, in a, a 30 degree yeah, angle. And, um, and then here's the hard question is, are you oversampling the edges at all on those? On those? Um, no, but you can, <laughs> you can design graphics to oversample on that uh, and over create that. templates, but yeah. So as far as the 3D effects go, yeah, it's not f uh, fully 3D sampled. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. The uh, no, no one does that, by the way. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're asking, I was just throwing him. That, that was that was a ball. Like, like if, he, if he hits Alex that, Alex is you know. submitting his wish list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, but the um, uh, uh, anyway, that's that. That sounds great. It's a it sounds like a great platform. Now, what's the what's the cost? Basic costs. Well, we start out with a free version, mm -hmm. um, a 60 day trial, which is fully functional. Install it on your laptop. Become familiar with how the whole workflow works, and then you have a basic version, which is SD only, mm -hmm. which is free for life, just to get people started. Um, and then we work all the way up to um, vMix Pro, which we've just released this year, which is. Uh, uh, introductory price of twelve hundred dollars. Now that's mm -hmm. a full instant replay system, mm -hmm. right. equivalent to a twenty thirty thousand dollar replay system right. for twelve hundred dollars. If you don't need the replay, then you can go and get the vMix four K version, which has everything else for seven hundred. And, and uh, that's, that's and that's all the software, and then you're going to build up whatever hardware you want. Yeah, so you can build your own hardware, or you can go with um, the systems we have um, at our booth this year. We have the vMix Go, which is a great portable unit, eight right. cameras built-in screen, it fits in a case you can carry on an airplane. Um, so that's $10,000 for eight inputs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a solution that you can plug into your laptop that is right. a Thunderbolt solution with four cameras um, for, I believe, $3,000. So um, if, if people out there are looking for a solution where they don't have to build their own PC, they just don't, don't want to have to worry about that or don't want to customize it, they can just come to our booth and check out those, those solutions um, that are ready to go. But if they are a tinkerer or a hobbyist, like, that's what I am. I right. like playing around with different components and the software is great as well. We're gonna, Fantastic. We're almost done, but I'm going to ask one more question. Control surfaces, how do you handle yeah. them? Yeah, so we've released a control surface this year that works both with, this, with the software and with our systems. Mm -hmm. um, it's a traditional switcher setup, so mm -hmm. if anybody's used any other control surface before, they'll feel right at home. So that's going to be released probably towards the end of April, early May. Do we have an idea of pricing? Around $2,000. Okay, that's great. Um, so it, USB? It's, yeah, USB. USB or Lightning, mm -hmm. or I mean, not Lightning, uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, USB. Plug okay. it into, if you're using a laptop, computer, or our systems, okay. just plug it right in and it works straight away. So hopefully end of April, early May, we'll start shipping. Now here's, I, I'm a Mac user, heavy Mac user. Any idea about going over and doing a Mac version? Well, we've just found that they've just performance tuned Windows so heavily for 3D games and games always run better on Windows, it's not necessarily because Windows is better at games, it's just all the game manufacturers it's have install base. Optimized, right. optimized heavily for it, and we take advantage of that game architecture okay. for vMix. You and you guys use uh, GPU acceleration? Yeah. Good. So because of that, vMix just runs better on Windows, just the way the market is. As games become more popular on the Mac, we'll definitely look at that once the performance cool. is on the same level. Great. Great. Well, That's thank great. you for joining us. Yeah, we appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, you be sure that uh, if you have any questions or anything, to be sure to tweet them at NAB Show or use hashtag NAB Show. And um, I'm Dave Curley, and this is Alex Lindsay. Thanks for watching.